Welcome to the Two Can Talks podcast, where we bounce from topic to topic with our guests to give you an inside look at their life as a business owner. No question is off limits as we talk about what has led to the successes, the challenges, and more. And this podcast is brought to you by Kickstart Studios. Kickstart Studios is Wilmington's newest video podcast studio. Equipped with multiple camera angles and an in-house producer, creating a high-quality video podcast has never been easier. Don't let the tech and gear learning curve hold you back from jumping into podcasting or creating video content any longer. Our team takes care of it all for you so you can focus on the message you want to share. You simply show up, record, and receive the final product. No more wasting time setting up and breaking down the gear, setting up lights, or doing sound checks on your own. Our in-house producer will have everything set up and ready to go for you. So check us out at Kickstart Studios. Welcome to the Two Can Talks podcast. Um, we have been on, I think, a two-week, we're going to call it summer break. Um, so this is first episode that we've done in a few weeks. It's going to be an exciting time. Our guest today is Rob Warwick. Full disclosure, because we like this podcast to be transparent, he is my brother, so it should be fun. That is true. <laughs> Those are facts. We're going to flip the script on you. Let's not. I don't answer questions on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm just kidding. I have occasionally. Um, okay, so before I get started... Um, we still have our lovely sponsor for this episode, which is More Than Clay. She makes handmade pottery. You can find her at morethanclay.com. Use code TUCAN, like the bird, for 10% off your order. Um, I highly recommend. This is not a More Than Clay mug, so sorry. Um, but there's some cool things back there if you people want to zoom in. So if the handle falls off, it's not her problem. No, that's Target's problem. Um, sorry. Fair enough. Sorry. It's not, it's not custom today. Too bad. Too bad. Um, mm. Other housekeeping. So I don't know if you've tuned into an episode of this podcast or not. I've watched. I watched. Uh, you watched the reels. I watched the reels, <laughs> and then the. Well, I watched uh, Steve's. Steve's. So. Mm-hmm. Our father. Who would be your dad? And your dad. Yes. <laughs> All right. So how this lovely podcast situation works is you have these tokens. Um, they are pink. And you drop them anywhere on the board. If it lands on a one, we have a business question. If it lands on a two, we have questions from what we call our party can. They are not business questions. They are other questions. Um, If a coin flies off the board, Mm. just go again. Okay. If it gets stuck on a peg, we made up a rule for if it got stuck on the peg. Is that when you get to ask me a question? So if you, every now and again, it gets like stuck. Oh, it's about to happen. And then, yeah, I guess then you get to ask me a question. Um, other than that, I think that's how this works. Um, I guess besides being my brother, do you want to tell these lovely people what you do for work and why you're here? (laughs) Uh, I am here, I guess. Yeah. I am your brother. Uh, but yeah, my guess, yeah, Rob Warwick and, uh, work in real estate with Cole Banker, uh, here in town on the residential side. Sweet. Um, and I did just confirm because I clearly don't know anything about what anybody in my family does for work. Um, since this podcast guest, our business owners as real estate, is all real estate agents pretty Mm -hmm. much 1099. So they're all business owners. Yeah. Pretty much all business owners under the umbrella. Like I'm under the umbrella of Cole Banker, you know, other companies would be sole, sole business owners under that umbrella and just have teams under the, under the umbrella of Cole Banker said company. Cool. Sweet. Um, and your team is just the Warwick team. team. So, <laughs> yep. That's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, which has been pretty cool for about six years, which not a lot of people can say we've had team members. So I've got, uh, Amy and Bradley and they work with me and then, uh, we do, uh, neighborhoods, so neighborhood development and then general brokerage. So that's been pretty fun. And, cool. you know, you see, see a lot of people come off the teams or go out on their own. And, um, mm-hmm. so it's kind of been fun to have, have those same two for, over six years at this point. Nice. That is exciting. That's very exciting. And it seems like, it seems like a good accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. 
At least y'all like each other, apparently. Yeah. Keep so, up with each other and like yeah. each other. And, uh, yeah, it's been, been a good relationship overall. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, well, I feel like residential real estate in terms of what does your business do is probably kind of self-explanatory but you can dive into pretty much that's uh buying yeah, selling the neighborhood realm i guess yep so yeah it's not like hgtv unfortunately so people don't look at three homes and buy one um so that's kind that's of the, a bummer it is too bad um, <laughs> sometimes um, but yeah no we do general brokerage so yeah if you call listen your home or need to buy a home we do that um and then our focus really has been on um phone's ringing um i'm waiting for a spam call during mm, the podcast okay and then we make that person join the podcast okay that's excellent. my like next goal for this podcast is okay. to... i'm sure it will happen with <laughs> me here <laughs> that's a, but yeah that's a, but no the big focus has been uh neighborhoods and we've closed out a couple um you know where the builders the on-site guys they move out we kind of took over to close out the product or uh, Waterstone and Porter's Neck has been kind of our home base for um, about four years at this point. So cool. that's uh, up in Porter's Neck, and uh, we've had five builders at one time, so worked yes. directly with them. We're down to two. Um, we've probably got another 18 months in there, uh, but it's been a really good one as far as price point. We started for 50, and then we've got some custom homes uh, up into like the million eight range. Uh, nice. So that's been a really really fun project and kind of the first one we did from the ground up with the whole team so cool. that's been been a fun one nice all right well we can get this party started you can drop the coin anywhere coin. you want oh, that sounds good hopefully it's getting stuck <laughs> oh, first yeah. so your first options one. are you can make up a question on your own or we do have a stack in that more than clay business card holder, actually, on the shelf with those yellow right cards, you can pick a card from there. I'm gonna make this one easy because I'm gonna get another one stuck. Okay. <laughs> I get to pick one. You get to pick one. Some of them are more like dare related, and some of them are questions. Yeah, we're not asking dare. Uh, well, I mean, related ones. Not like related. No, like not weird. Um, <laughs> I did well. not put dares in there for strangers that I don't know that are weird. <laughs> Not that people on our podcast are strangers, but... No, we're all friends here. Yeah. All right. What is... All right. Jobs. Jobs you could do if you quit your... Pressure washer. ...today. You would be a pressure washer. 100%. Why? <laughs> <laughs> was, why was it so fast that you answered that question? Because I thought about if I ever shut down Kickstart Collective, what would I do? It would be open a pressure washing business. Oh. Sorry, Josh. I hope you like pressure washing. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? I, my follow-up is why? Immediate gratification. Okay. You, like, it really doesn't matter what you look like because you're going to be disgusting afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can just roll out of bed, go pressure washing. You're good because you don't like to take a shower. Correct. They're overrated. That's true story. I hate washing my hair. Um, you get vitamin D. You're outside. Okay. You Fair don't have enough. to think about it. You can put in AirPods and literally... I mean, you do have to run the business side of it, so I understand. It's maybe I should just be in a pressure washing employee. There you go. All there, right, there it is. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> I never knew. <laughs> Fun fact. All right, I carry on. Yep. Also, Huck, out of the blue, every time he starts school, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? He says, "Wall cleaner." Yeah. So I think there's hope for I'd us. I'd say that's y'all. Y'all make a good, uh-huh. good option. Mother, Oof. son pressure washing business there you go new thing mm-hmm. all right this should be an easy one what is your favorite 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 easy. local go-to place for it says whatever so it could be food it could be fun what's your favorite local place mm, for dinner like date night uh, bridge tender okay mm-hmm. always the horseradish encrusted tuna okay fun fact <laughs> I feel bad saying this because this is on the internet. Do you remember when we were children and we called it the barf tender? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Things have changed. Things have changed. So, <laughs> yes. I mean, I was probably seven and I probably just wanted McDonald's. So I was probably just mad. Chicken nuggets. You yeah. Go um, ride your bike with Carter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, no, yeah. Bridge tender is probably our date night go-to spot. Um, we did go eat at Covey the other night. Oh, and that was that was, good? It was really good. It's on the list. That was very good. Mm. You got to get the glass private room or you can't hear yourself think. Is it loud? 
it's pretty loud. Okay. It, so yeah, the glass room solves the the issue of being at dinner with everyone else. Okay. Uh, but yeah, as far as like going out and hanging out, um, we're on the boat or the pool, so that's really yeah, not a Masonburg Island would be the location. So. I think that was Dad's answer. So. Mm-hmm. Cool. His with um, dogs, mine's with kids, and Jenny, of course. True. Yes. Um, <laughs> the Chamber Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. I think their networking event is at the Cuffy this month, and I was like, oh, I'll go to that one. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. If needed, uh, ask for uh, give out everyone's secret. It's Chip's room. Fun fact: It is in the back, and it's private, and it's got a bunch of woodwork and all oh, sorts okay. of paintings and. It's That's that would cool. be the spot to go. So yeah. Okay. Now there's gonna be a couple hundred reservations for chip room, but you just you heard it here on Two Can Talks, folks. It's a fun fact. Ask. All right. <laughs> Can I say yes. that? Yes. Store. Possibly. Hopefully stick another one. Business. These are business questions. These are business questions. Okay. Um. What? has been your biggest challenge in regards to your career? Uh, we went through, uh, well, started at a different company and now you know, transitioned to Coal Banker. Um, probably it really inventory has probably been the last two years of you go through COVID. No one wanted to see anybody. So that yeah. was kind of hard to show homes. And then you had the poll. You just had such a spectrum of people like, I don't care. Or it was yeah. so serious. You can't come to my house. And that was, that was interesting, um, but probably inventory. Um, and then, you know, kind of dealing with the day to day and you just can't, I mean, Bradley and I were talking earlier today and we're going to write a book of like the craziest things that we've run into. Um, one of, we were like, we should ask. Yes. Day of close, <laughs> so day of closing, like yesterday, Bradley, um, doing a final walkthrough. They were going to meet at nine supervisor called at six and said, uh, we have no idea where the water is coming from, but there's water pouring out of the home. So moving trucks, attorney, like everybody is waiting to go. <laughs> and now we're going to be delayed a month because they're cutting the drywall out. Um, and then just the whole home was essentially water damage everywhere. Uh, and you have just all sorts of crazy situations that people that are like, yeah, they just have no idea. And it's like, yeah, we, you know, we're a therapist, we're a, you know, advisor. Mm-hmm. And then also on the real estate side. So yeah, it's the, it's the biggest challenge of the job um, on a day-to-day inventory, yeah. but then also like every situation and people are so different that um, you just, it's like no one would believe of like, you know, because I go home and Jenny, I'm like, Jenny, listen to this. And she's like, <laughs> how did that happen? I'm like, well, that's pretty normal. And he's like, that's not normal at all. I was like, that's not even a hard one to figure out. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm kind of weeding through the day-to-day of the total unknown and yeah. every one is different. And then so their purchase is different or the listing side is different. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a fun challenge. Nice. Well, yeah, that's the fresh one is the toilet overflow day of closing. So Yeah, or, that sucks. Yeah, or you have people that take their washer and dryer that was in the contract and then mm. everyone's sitting there like, Who, what do we do with no washer and dryer? Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a... If that was our biggest problem, we'd be all good, but yeah. <laughs> so, Here's $2,000 for less. <laughs> pretty much. Like, and there's that. So, Go this side. Ooh. Back to that. Okay. So, you, do you know what a spirit animal is? <laughs> Not really. Probably no. <laughs> That's okay. Well, this is going to be a complicated question then. Okay. Good. So, your spirit right. animal is like what? If you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Hmm. You don't have to answer that. Okay. But that's where we're going. Oh, good. That's okay. Funny. So. Instead of if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? If you were a type of food, what food would you be? I said nachos, just as an example, because they're kind of messy. They're everyone generally likes them, which I know sounds kind of weird, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I feel like I'm an easy person to get along with. Fair. They're kind of just like whatever. They kind of just blend in, kind of do what mm-hmm. you want, like me. All right. Kind of cheesy. I was about to say, I might uh, might have to go with like a. Smash burger for the same. Mm. You're Overall greasy? peel, not greasy. That's, <laughs> you're the one that doesn't shower. I do shower. I just don't wash my hair. She a does lot. not <laughs> smell it as a child. Um, we, 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 we had to take you outside and spray you off the hose. Um, yeah, 
uh, I hope it gets stuck and we ask you the question next. Uh, I would say smash burger. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. General cl- crowd pleaser, not yep. overcomplicated. Yep. You can burn them pretty easily. I can't. Yes. Okay. That's, um, they don't know what they're doing. Could be, could be controversial. Most of the yeah. time not. So okay. yeah, I'd say smash burger. Okay. Have you tried mess all yet? Yes. Okay. It's very good. Good. Mm-hmm. New what location would... is much better for, uh, Hanging. Everyone else and hanging yes. out. And, mm-hmm. Did you leave the Google review? That was not me. No, there was someone named not Rob. A, not a big Google a, reviewer, so everyone that else. I left a Google review, and it was like, the new location is great, the atmosphere. Like, literally, like, two days ago. Uh, it was not me, but, uh, you know. Might Ro- as well have Rob's been. are good people, yes, so, yeah, I, I think we got a fair uh, fair compliment on that. Yes. So. Um, well, yeah, I'd say. those are our favorite smash burgers in town, so there you go. They are quite good. Now we know. Now you know. Smash burger. Mm-hmm. That pretty well describes me. Glad I didn't have to. Meep. Apparently I like that one. Usually it seems like people will get like all ones or all twos mm. for like the first round. Trying to get it. Okay. This is, we haven't had this one since the second episode. Oh, exciting. We're bringing the OG question. Uh-huh. Good. Frank call your own business. So you probably have to use my phone because they're probably going to have uh, your yeah. phone number. Yeah, true. But you can, if you need to look up their phone number, you can. Do I just call to the secretary? Whoever she's you at, want. She's at lunch. Okay. You can call whoever you want. Okay. And then you just have to somewhat disguise your voice. All right. You can so, say whatever you want. There's Again, there's no rules in this podcast. Could this be controversial because... It's on the internet. Well, no, she's going to know. Um, so she has gotten into... This lady at the office I'm thinking about, um, mm. she is gotten into Bitcoin. And so I basically give her a hard time about, you know, how terrible Bitcoin. it is. There's, there's some guy in India basically on his computer and she gets all mad about it. So, um, oh, no. I don't think I could prank call her. Um, she would know, but I'd have to go like into a whole different personality. Could you so. pretend to be the plumber and call Bradley and like get really in depth about this toilet situation? I think he's going to know. Mm. I could, um, Got to do the face. Let me see who answers at the front desk. And if it's her, just then I'll like just that. say like, you know, hey, I'm calling about this home and um, I just drove by. That's Because this is the most frustrating thing um, when you get a phone call and it's like, hey, I'm in Wilmington. And it's like, great. I'm like, hey, I'm looking at this. I just passed this sign. And it's like, okay, where are you? I don't know. I'm not from here. And it's like, okay, um, what's it look like? Well, it's a brick ranch home in Wilmington. And it's like, that really just narrowed it down, so sir. Many, let me get you some prices. So, so many neighborhoods. Um, I might just go like super you southern. You could go super southern, yes. And then, yeah, just put on speaker. Hello, Baker. This is Kim. Can I help you? Yes, ma'am. How you doing today? We're good. I was uh, calling about information on this home I just passed a little bit ago and didn't know if you could connect me to the agent. Yes, I can. Hold on a second. I'll put you through the one that's on duty right now. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We're about to prank call two people in one phone call. (laughs) Out better than I thought. Yes, ma'am. I was looking for some information on a home I just passed by. Okay, do you have the address? Um, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just was uh, driving and saw your sign and uh, had to call the office. Uh, I can yeah. kind of give you an idea where I'm at. It's uh, King King Street. Oh, okay. King Street over here in Wilmington. Yes, ma'am. There's several, I think, on the street. Hold on. I think it was gray. Hold on. Let's see. I've got two, three, four. There's five. I don't know. That's Edenton. Let me see. I'm all turned around. Are you in Wilmington or South? I mean, Safa. Uh, Wilmington, yes, ma'am. I came over. It was the Montree Hill Bridge, I do believe. Okay, okay. Let me go to my map. Cause I'm getting... oh, 
Thank you. I got a map, but it's on paper. I fused. Got turned around. That's all right. Let me let me do my quick search. I'll be able to find it. I just gotta wait for my computer to catch up. <laughs> I hate them damn things sometimes. They get me all combobulated. Okay. Well, oh, you been you been having a good day? I am. How about you? Oh yes, ma'am. We're driving around, interested in some homes. Mm, I was, and then had to move away for work, and then now I'm moving, trying to trying to get back to town. Okay, all right. That's nice. Okay, I'm getting close on all these. That's it. It's 21st Street. Just doing a good job. I know. Doing some qualifying. I kind of feel bad about this. <laughs> Let me zoom in. I've got two little green dots. Mm. King Street. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, that one says it's 1613 King Street. It looks like it's a rental because it's, it's pending, mm. but it has $2,000. So when you okay. bought it, it's turning it over to rent. Hmm. Let me see. But there's another one. Hold on. I think All right. a model. Um, okay. There's... When you come in to the neighborhood, you go over the Love Grove Memorial Bridge. Mm -hmm. And so the very first house on the left, I mean, excuse me, very first house on the right, is actually called Creek Front Drive. Uh, King is off of that one, but on, this one on Creek Front is active. It's $336,490. Mm. Is, is that fit into your budget? Getting a little expansive. Whew. Oh, um, hmm. <laughs> let me. I'm, I'm gonna turn. I'm, I'm turn around. Hold on. Let me get back. See if I can get you this address. Uh, I I was more like in the 280 range. That's, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah, 280 is very competitive uh, right now. They're a few and far between, but you can find them. Mm. <laughs> that's not scared to do a little fixer upper. Okay, all right, that's good. I'm handy. How, much, how many square feet do you reckon you need? Or? Oh, that's, let's do three, three bedroom, two bath. Okay. Man. How, let's, let's do this. Let's, uh, how about you, uh, if you can do a search and then send it to me, and then mm -hmm. I give my, my wife's email address and uh, you can send it to her. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. I don't. I won't keep you all day. You know, you got things to do and homes to sell. Give me your name. No, I'm here. I'm here to answer the phone today. Okay. Well, that's good. What was your name? My name's Bobby. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last name is W A R W I C K. Warwick. Mm-hmm. And then right, my and my wife, she does all the emailing, and I'm gonna give you her email address. Okay. Her name's Laura. So, okay. all right, that's L A U R A. Mm -hmm. And then at. And it'll be okay. Kick. K I C K. Okay. S T. And then start. So it's. S T A R T mm -hmm. and then collective C O L L E C T I V E dot co. So there's no there's no M on it. Dot co. Yeah. Co. Yeah. Com Compliment. Yes, ma'am. Law, yeah. Law at kickstart collective dot co. Mm hmm. That's perfect. And let me jot down your cell phone number. Sure. It's 910 uh, 262 
Yeah, while we're at it, just go ahead and do that one. Let's say 300,000 or 325 and under in that same zip code. I like this area. Okay, so um, 2401, now that goes out. Um, actually, I live further down 133 mm. where, while you're still, you're in the county. But you're still in a, in a Wilmington address, which is nice. Because mm, um, mm -hmm. you don't pay city taxes. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, not much of taxes. Um, oh, that one's 410. You know, that's a town. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look and um, see if there's anything. And if you see anything. Now, here's one. Excuse me. For 285. Now, I just feel bad. Right. <laughs> That'd be real helpful. Okay, well, we'll be driving around. I'll be excited to see that list. Okay. Probably that'd be my watch. She'll be checking that. Ooh, te text me and then, uh, yeah, send me that, that bigger list maybe uh, to that, that email. Yeah, Laura, Laura's email. That'd be great. Right, right. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. All right, I'll touch base. Okay, yeah. That's great. All right, I'll touch base with you. And again, I'm Pat Mason. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. I'm so excited and much appreciate your help. All right, my pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Huh, bye bye. So uh, you all got pranked <laughs> on the prank phone call because I'm going to be on the email list forever. That's your email. And then uh, the phone number that we gave out, if you're interested in commercial real estate or properties, that was dad's uh, cell phone number yes. that we gave her. So he's going to get some properties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out great. Well, that was. Oh, no, it's, it's, no. No, it's mm -hmm. on the website. It's no. on. It's on their website. I'd say you can. Call him if you're looking for commercial property in the Wilmington <laughs> area. He's going to be your next sponsor. So there you go. There you go. Well, um, that was fun. Yeah, she did great. Mm -hmm. I should leave her a um, I re Google review. We should do that. That was Miss Pat Mason did a great job and put up with it. Oh, Bobby. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Welcome to the podcast. Perfect. Man. <laughs> She's yeah. We had Kim at front and then uh, Pat. Who knew? Who knew? They I didn't e know. They don't even know. They were on they a podcast know. today. They were on a podcast talking to me on a different phone number <laughs> and uh, sending emails to you and then texting dad. He's going to be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Which is even better. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. Personal. Uh, business can is number one. No. Oh. Oh. Okay. When it comes to being successful in business and real estate specifically, what do you think's the key? Mm. Networking, customer service, sales, marketing, nepotism. I'm just kidding. All, <laughs> I'm just kidding. all above except for whatever you just said. Uh, nepotism. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, probably customer service. Um, so leading came from a customer service background in a previous job. So customer service. And then really, I think the biggest problem that we find, like I'll call you tomorrow or let me send you the searches and then just it, we get busy or whatever happens and they never do. So um, yeah, customer service and then being reliable on like just basically basic, do what you say you're going to do, I think is very important. Um, and that really honestly would separate you from probably 90% of the agents of, you know, I'm going to follow up with you. I'm going to call you, yeah. you know, kind of do, you know, drive by the area, feed, you know, give me feedback. So, um, 
yeah, that and being available. I mean, that's the biggest thing when we're showing houses is typically when you're off work or, you know, yeah. on the weekends. So if you, you know, all you take every weekend off, you're going to be real skinny and probably starving because not a lot of clients, um, yeah. you know, it's so that's part of it. It's not a nine to five gig. It's definitely not a nine to five gig. And um, yeah, between nine to five, you're typically doing your follow up or your basic stuff. And then, you know, pre nine showing homes or then after that. So that's the, but yeah, I would say, yeah, customer service and then just being responsible and respecting, you know, their time and their needs and yes. kind of turn your, turn your listening ears on would be yeah. the biggest thing. Read in between the lines. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Get a bonus question. Um, yeah, we got time for like two more. Perfect. Hopefully we stick it and then, uh, see what happens. I don't think we have had one fly off the board yet. It might be a record. Do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's my. I figured. I'm in control right. of the board. Yes. Oh, this podcast is ridiculous. I'm just going <laughs> to All right. Let's see. <laughs> Since you're aging. I am. I will ask you this question. I aged 10 years in the past two months. That's true. That's because you have a small child. Mm -hmm. Two small children. Um Things to do before you hit your next decade. Next decade. Ooh. People would love to know if you're going back on your going RV. Going back on the road. Uh, yes. Um, unfortunately, no. Sad day. Yeah. We, I was actually thinking about this the other day. So we're renting out our house. We're renting. And that was like, when we originally like, oh yeah, this is a good idea. We should do this. Mm-hmm. It was more so because then we'd have the flexibility if we wanted to go on the road for a month or two. Just the way the rental incomes and whatever's work out that we could do that pretty easily. Um, and then this is not, this is a long story, not the answer to the question. But then, you know, Luke has like, I think five jobs at the moment. So mm -hmm. like we can't really cut out for two months. Um, He's so expert multitasker apparently yeah, at yes. work. Yeah, I would have a meltdown, but he does fine. Um, before the next decade. Portugal's on our list. Okay. Um, throw that out there. Just going to go to Portugal, <clears throat> drink some wine, eat some food. Swing in a Greece while you're there? Maybe. Greece sounds fun. Okay. Um, I don't know. Probably get another dog once. Max just turned 14, so he's going to pass before the next decade, my next decade. Mm -hmm. I'm not that close to 40. Not as close as you are. So you got a few more years, so. Mm -hmm. um, so probably get another dog. Huck wants to name our next dog, next two dogs, Trashy, and then the other one is gonna be Showtowner. Hopefully, by the time he is there, we're changing names. No, I think that's hilarious. Could you imagine having a dog, especially one that like you're hunting with, named Trashy, and just like yelling Trashy? I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. It's <laughs> that's on you. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's definitely gonna be a girl, and it's definitely gonna be probably mostly white. Like our other dogs. So okay. I have a white girl named Trashy. Right. Um, so yeah, Portugal, probably another dog. I don't know. Okay. Good if goals. I win the lottery, I'm going to buy a G-Wagon. Okay. If you win the lottery, what are I you buying play, me? I don't play the lottery, so I'm not going to win. But if <laughs> I did and I do, then I'm going to get a G-Wagon. Okay. I don't know. You don't know what you'd buy me if I, if I you know. won the lottery? You're in boat. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> well, shit. That'll work. Got him. <laughs> there you go. I'm just kidding. We need to sell Luke's boat and get a more family friendly boat. Good idea. Um, by we, I mean Luke. I'm not doing any of that. Mm. I don't really know what I meant by this question, so I'm just going to make it up. Um, <laughs> obviously, yes. you see the influx of people moving into Wilmington. Yes. Is it still as steady as it was like six months ago? It Or more or less? Or is it chilling out? It's calmed down a little bit. Uh, I mean, during COVID when everybody it was like cool to work from home and everybody's company was like sending them mm -hmm. home, we saw, I mean, that was the greatest demand. Um, yeah. 
that's calmed down a little bit. So, you know, really as far as like the new businesses coming and open in Wilmington, like that's a little bit slower, but then you still have the retirees or companies that are finally catching on to the folks they want two or three days from home Mm -hmm. um, or the flexibility of like, I'm a parent and I want to do that. So yeah, yeah, you're still seeing it and it's really a demand in workforce housing. So kind of under 400 at this point, it's going to be pretty heavy. And then once you get into the luxury market, um, we have seen just a you know, massive amount of influx from California, Florida, typical New York, you know, your yeah. retirees. Um, but really, it's really been everywhere across the country. Um, and we talk to That's people bad. every day. And it's like, they have no idea about Wilmington. They yeah. call and it's like, yeah, my friend's brother's neighbor's uncle moved there. He said, it's awesome. And it's like, it's a great place to live. You know, not arguing that, but then they have no idea of like any context of Mm -hmm. what Wilmington is or what to do or where they're at. So um, you're getting a lot of more of those calls of, Hey, they moved during COVID. Now we want to follow them and kind of be closer for like a family unit. So um, that, uh, yeah, no, the demand, we are kind of in a protected little bubble, I would say, as far as, um, as Wilmington, because, you know, if you're looking in California where your home's $15 million and yeah. your taxes are $50,000 a year, same, you know, cheap. it's very cheap to hear. Yeah. So, which I get not to everybody, it's cheap and prices no. have obviously yeah. gone up, but, um, compared to some taxes and other factors, it's a great place to live and still the demand. Do you, so you're hanging in Porter's neck a lot. Do you mm-hmm. see like Wilmington creeping into like Hampstead and Surf City all just becoming one. Yes. That's one Atlanta hub. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I foresee in the next and the commercials following, but it's not there yet. But basically, Wilmington, Hampstead will all be one. And then you'll have really Jacksonville, kind of Sneeds Ferry, you know, and Surf City yeah. kind of mirroring each other, especially once DOT gets the bypass done that they're working on. Um, yeah north of where they're doing on military cutoff. But uh, mm-hmm. once that all interchanges and if I can be in Hampstead in 10 minutes, you know, on the bypass, yeah. that changes Hampstead. Plus it gives some relief to all the traffic that everyone's yeah. complaining about. Um, won't get into building new schools. That's not what I'm worried about. <laughs> not, yeah, <laughs> not, not you, my battle. Not so, for um, another few years. Yep. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's, yeah, I do see yeah, Wilmington to really Jacksonville, probably let's say 10 years being one. And then same thing with Leland. I mean, the expansion of Leland down to really the South Carolina line is probably yeah. realistic, even though they'll be their own. massive. Yeah. Yes, they'll be their own little things, so. but it all mm-hmm. feel like one. Yep. Fun times. Um, there was part two of that question. What was I going to ask? How does that, do you feel like influences like the overall business landscape of Wilmington? Mm. All these people you're um, selling homes to you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's good for real estate agents, uh, you yep. know, to have more people moving in the area than moving out and not yeah. selling their homes. So, that part's really, um, you know, positive for us. Yeah, I think the services is going to take the biggest hit. Um, you know, as far as right now, with staffing like restaurants yeah. and, you know, these people moving from this area want you know higher end dining. They're mm-hmm. moving from Raleigh, Charlotte, you know, L.A., where they're used to. You know, it's no big deal to go out to a really nice dinner. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's probably where we're lacking. But then also, I mean, I hear it from Jenny's side of the world. Um, you know, you're waiting four or five months to see an eye doctor. Yeah. You're waiting, you know, there's one allergist in town that everybody wants to see. So there's a lot of pressure on probably the services of the medical community. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, if you're coming to retire, you're going to need specialty doctors. all the specialty doctors. And do you yeah. want to go to Duke and Carolina all the time? No, you yeah. want to stay in Wilmington. So, and I think Novant sees that and we've got some folks that work for Novant that have moved into Waterstone for like the North Campus. Cool. They're trying to expand cool. that. Yeah. So you do have some there's some vision, but the you people moved here. Up. I mean you went yeah. through three years or four years of moving in six months and then yeah. now you've got to play that catch up game on the commercial and the medical side to basically support all the new residents and Yeah. That makes you sense. know that's a that's tough because you you couldn't build it ahead of time of yeah. like you know it's not field of dreams or like build it and they <laughs> will come and it's like it could be but maybe not and hurry up and wait and yeah then now the, now the people are here so yeah. now it, now it feels like it's delayed because like we're here mm-hmm. we're mad and it's like yeah. well you can't build you just you know, got here yeah you Sorry. just you just showed up like yeah. we didn't know you six months ago so <laughs> we didn't know um, you were coming. but yeah it's been it's been positive and they've I think you know the the new residents will basically demand some better changes and, you know, some updates and new roads. So that part ultimately is positive. Yeah, that's true. 
I don't, cool. yeah, don't, uh, don't hate the people that moved here and it's good for the area. So yeah. Yeah. Not, not against it. Like some people don't it's like true. the, don't like the change. We do have a question and I think the two can of, if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about Wilmington, what would it be? And the infrastructure is definitely a popular question. Mm, yeah, it would probably be roads. Um, you, you know, and driving from, we live on the south side of town and then driving to Porter's Neck every day, you know, used to be able to do that in 15 minutes. And yeah. then now it's 45 minutes. And then they get a wreck on Market Street and, you know, they play bumper cars. And yeah. so it takes an hour. And so that's the, yeah, really roads. Um, and that's a DOT thing, not necessarily like a developer. Um, yeah. Because everyone's mad at the guys building the apartments, or they're mad about the new neighborhoods, but it's really DOT working retroactively versus proactive. Yeah. Um, but they've got to have the population to support it. So um, I think we're That's what there. Call so. the cluster. Yes, it's quite the cluster. I <laughs> so, military cutoff is kind of a cluster right now. Working at Casablanca one day, and I was texted Lucas because he was at home working with the kids. I was like, "All right, I'm headed home," but I didn't tell him from where so he thought I was coming from here which is like 10 minutes tops to get mm -hmm. home and at one point he was like are you ever coming back and I was like yeah I've been on the road I'm literally on the way he's mm -hmm. like there's no way you left when you said you did and I was like yeah I did mm -hmm. and then I got home and I was like oh no I was going to cross Waka. and he was like okay that makes more sense <laughs> it's like yeah why are you getting mad at me mm -hmm. then I realized like oh he had no idea where I was yeah, true that's <laughs> a, yeah it's a whole different thing where you're coming from yeah if you're kind of going and, and that's really why I think the cool part you're seeing like like slice of life is probably the easy example they've got you know in a bigger city you have one pizza place yeah. and then they've got four locations or whatever so and people kind of live in their little bubble in Wilmington of like yeah the we monkey junction people to aren't gonna go 17th there 17th so. street mm -hmm. uh slice of life mm -hmm. and it was great Makes it easy. Yeah. But you wouldn't get in your car and drive to Porter's Neck to Absolutely. go eat there. So <laughs> that's the, <laughs> I like it. I don't like it that much. That's where it's funny <laughs> of like the people like Monkey Junction of the Monkey Junction. Yeah. And then like they don't leave the little bubble. Little so mm -hmm. Yep. So, Sweet. Fun fact. Well, thanks for coming in. Mm-hmm. Playing along. Thank you, uh, yes. Pam. Pam. It's Pam. Thank you, Pam. The office, Kim Thank and Pam, Pam at the office. Thank you, Kim and Pam. I'm so sorry we took so much <laughs> of your time. Um, I really look forward to receiving your email. Unfortunately, I'm not, I actually got a phone call this morning. Um, do you do the sales techniques? So our house was up on Zillow for rent mm. and a guy called today and I didn't have the number, but the name showed up and it was the last name of a friend's last name, but it was a different first name. So I was like, maybe they're like mm. on their parents. Mm -hmm. So I answered it. I wouldn't normally answer it. And he was like, Hey, I was just wondering if your house was still available for rent. And I was like, no. And then he was like, would you ever be interested in selling it? And I was like, no. No. Also. No, a few agents. <laughs> I know like 500 real estate agents. And obviously I would work with my brother. But I don't know. <laughs> anywho, I was like, no. Um, he was like, well, are you looking for any more rental properties? I was like, no, I don't know, man. Maybe. You're calling the. Sure. Call <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Not right now. I don't know. Give it, giving one away. <laughs> Yeah, like, what What do you got? Uh -huh. But then I was also like, no, because I really don't want you to call me ever again. Not I mean, true. he was super nice and, like, whatever. I'm sure he's a great yes. individual. But I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. that's, do you do that? That's a tactic. Uh, I used to do something not necessarily going after I don't think it's a bad go. tactic. Like, if no. I was interested and or if he called, well, if obviously we didn't, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know anybody. I just tried to <laughs> if I didn't home, know, so. Yeah, if I didn't know a that's, real estate agent or 10... Mm -hmm. And I was more, Luke's more so in charge of that whole situation, not me in this relationship. So mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know. It can work. So, yeah, I mean, there's a way like, um, cause you can geofence an area and basically call them. So, yeah. and I, I would do it around like my listings of like more for awareness of like, yeah. Hey, yes. I just listed the home across the street. Do you know anybody? Do your friends and then, want to live um, here? Yes, basically. Yeah. So that was more my tactic versus going after like rentals. And I know yeah. people go after like for sale by owners and they'll dial mm -hmm. and, that's good um, where I'm at with the neighborhood developments. I don't have yeah. the time necessarily to devote because you've got to be very consistent and thorough with yeah. that. So um, it's a lot of phone calls. It's a lot of phone calls. The, you get yeah. on the dialer and I call, call people. back and be like, what is your conversion rate on this? <laughs> yes. That would be a f interesting to know. Kind of want to know. Now I'm curious. Yes. Um, cool. That was random and totally not related, but <laughs> business and real estate. And that, that's where we were. That's all it goes together. Um, okay. What can people 
expect from you next? Mm. Besides, yeah, well, I mean, if you want to share about your personal life, you can, but it's not really the purpose of this podcast. We're, we're potty training, <laughs> so I got a potty trained kid, and uh, yeah, that's, that's important. Is a that was a milestone for uh, yeah. Mr. Banks. So. It is mm-hmm. a that's, um, uh, yeah, more so business is what business, I was thinking. Business. Uh, probably expand the team. So I've kept, you know, we've kept it very small. I've been very selective, I guess I would say yeah. maybe to a fault of like kind of have my core two people. And we've always had an admin um, to do our paperwork and marketing, but yeah, probably expand the team nice. and then hopefully, you know, jump off of Waterstone. We're probably another 24, 18 to 24 months in there realistic, um, but then pick up another development. And <laughs> that's probably where we're, where we're headed, but uh, yeah, that'd be good, good goals. And yeah, because you get to you get to a point basically too of like, you know, you work. I kind of went a little crazy, I guess, probably a couple of years ago and worked all the time. But you know, and then you've got the work life balance of like, yeah, you get home at six and the kid goes to bed at seven, and it's like you kind of miss a little bit of that. So yeah. not, you know, and we work seven days a week as agents, um, but trying to be a little better at that balance would yeah. probably be a good personal slash work goal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe a couple more agents and then, um, yeah, kind of step up. The lady that does our admin, Lisa, and um, maybe kind of step her up more into like a business manager position. Cool. Um, so, yeah, kind of transition her into so a Lisa, larger role. I don't know if y'all have had this conversation or not, but... Kind of. She's, she's, she's hinted at it and like, hey, I need to... It's now yeah. on camera. You have proof that yes, that is a consideration. It is a thought. <laughs> so, yeah. that's a, Don't run wild with a thought. But yeah, it's a thought. But, uh, yeah, probably adding on um, adding on to the team um, and then, yeah, more more communities and then still doing general brokerage and so just regular buyers and sellers in the market. Cool. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, what is one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? Um, I think most people that listen to this are their business owners and or like decision makers in a business. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a few people just watch it because it's weird and funny, but That's, I think it's funny. I don't I, know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, hopefully my Frank Cog got, <laughs> got somebody <laughs> thought it was funny. So I had fun on that one. So. <laughs> it's fun um, for us. I don't know if anyone else thinks it's funny. No, oh, yes. Um, yes. One final thought you'd like to leave these beautiful people. Fun fact. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on that one. Um, yeah. I mean, as far as like the, the Wilmington area, um, kind of speak to that more than anything, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's growing and such a great place to live and, you know, work. And that's been a positive for obviously you and I growing up here. And then, um, yeah, it's just been a really good, really good spot. So be my Does final that. thought of Wilmington uh, we, has it all and it's been good to us. So we keep coming back. Mm-hmm. All right. And some people never left. That's we didn't fine go too. live on an island. Yeah, so. whatever. Some people don't go live on an island because <laughs> yes. they're boring. I'm just <laughs> some of us have to work. So. I work on that <laughs> island. Mm-hmm. And I hammock eating a banana. That's true. We have banana trees and I had a hammock. Uh, yeah. That's I, where I worked. I saw a lot of bananas with Huck's FaceTiming. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. We did. Coconuts. Drinking uh, coconut water in my hammock on my computer. That's, you can't sell houses from an island, unfortunately. Well, I guess you could some ways, but hard to show houses on an island. Unless you're selling houses on the island. Uh, I don't know the rules and regulations of down there. Yeah, I don't either. I don't think there was any rules or regulations from what it sounded like. <laughs> There's actually too many rules and regulations, I think. <laughs> um, didn't which own is the... why we don't own a house down there. Fair enough. <laughs> that just wasn't meant to be. Um, okay, best way for people to get in touch with you mm. if they are interested in buying or selling or business development. I don't know. Yep, that's whatever uh, you have to offer. Cell phones always the easiest. It's on twenty four hours a day, but uh, easy number to remember at nine one zero two three three eight 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 eight. Or we're yeah website uh, that you guys uh, do a good job run and host, and uh, that's just first and last name, and then. Uh, anywhere on social media, so Facebook, Instagram, find us there. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, is that under the warrior? So Warriors? I've got well, two yeah. pages. So um, lots of options. Yeah, we got lots of options. So you've got uh, it's Rob Warwick at Coal Banker. Then you've got um, the Warwick team, uh, which that comes up as Search C Sold, and then um, yeah, Waterstone for new homes and development. It's just Waterstone NC. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. Hope you had fun. 
That was quite exciting. So that's, <laughs> it was a good time. was. Most I ever heard you talk in your life. So. I know. I tell you, I got to... Shocking. Turn on the radio host yeah, to this podcast. Luke, Luke may be on to something. He is correct. <laughs> All right. Thanks. We'll be back, I think, to our regular scheduled once a week podcast release after our little break. So get, get excited. We got some guests lined up. That should be pretty fun. So thanks for kicking off Perfect. our back to back to school summer welcome. break A- episode. Anything we can do to help. So. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yep. Cut.